Hello, and welcome to another unboxing. Can't do it, sorry. Trying to be all like funny. Yeah, no. It, anyway, hey, what's up y'all? Edward here at Heavy Cardboard. Uh, just got Tekenu, uh, Obelisk of the Sun, and figure, you know what? I needed a break from answering emails and stuff, so why don't I go ahead and throw this up here? So I thought I would do an unboxing for you guys today. So, there you go. Before we get started though, uh, this just came through, like literally like two minutes ago, so uh, cheers. Hold on, let me, uh, let me do this proper, like, there we go. Cheers, Derek. Thanks for the support, man, really appreciate it. It's really hot, I just brewed this tea. Oh. Oh, it's hot, but man, it's good. All right. So, hey, seriously, thanks for the support. If you guys enjoy it, like, subscribe, support the show, pledgehc.com, all that stuff. All right. Oh, David, sorry. I see David uh, Turtsy is uh, in chat. Uh, I was told this was your copy, but they diverted it here. So, sorry, David. What can we do? Should have been on my perseverance stream. All right. So, uh, yeah, let's get into it. I see Rainer from Board and Dice is also here. So, here we go. This is it. All right. So, I turned the autofocus on and everything on this camera, which I don't normally do because I figure I'm going to be zooming in and out on this. So, uh, yeah, there's that. All right. So, ah! All right. So, let's tear into it, shall we? All right. Cool. All right, cool. So, there we go. Back of the box. Da, 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 da. It's got a nice texture on it, too. Like, it's got a, like a linen finish on the box, it feels like. You hear that? Ah, oh, yeah, good stuff. All right, anyway, let's get into it. Oh, that's a proper buck. Oh. Y'all want to see? For real? All right, let's go. All right, there we go. <laughs> All right. So, uh, the obelisk is here. It's plastic, so in case people were wondering. Hear that? It's plastic. We'll come back to that. Uh, the cards here. Um, tear that into it. The, the, the box is linen finished. The cards are not. I find that somewhat somewhat funny so hold on here we go so you guys here we go all right i lied the cards are linen finished i stand corrected sorry <laughs> all right so here we go uh here you know what be easier to this is the english apparently turn these right side up there we go Oh, Derek, uh, you, I, if you want, I can, I can come by and drop this off on your front porch and you have full reign to paint this before our stream next week. I'm just saying, you are welcome to do so. Okay. So, just showing the artwork on fronts and backs of the cards. So they're obviously, if you guys watched our stream, I, uh, Rainer had me as a guest on the Virtual Con uh, Tabletopia stream. Let me ask everybody, since there's a whole bunch of y'all out there watching right now, I'm curious, what would you rather see? Would you rather watch me stream this in person with this copy of this, uh, and then a couple people virtual, and then me moving the pieces and doing all that like we have uh, been doing, even though that's going to take longer? Or would you prefer to see it on Tabletopia? Uh, or a tabletop simulator or anything like that, but obviously virtually. What would you guys prefer? I'm curious, because we're going to be doing this next week, and it's actually a discussion we've been having. So, the cards. Artwork looks really nice. It's very clean. The iconography looks good, and there's, uh, if you don't like the iconography, there's the words down below, so all that looks really, really good. And there are two other types of cards here. So yeah, all that looks really, really good. All right. So, all right, so there's the cards, okay. The dice look like just standard six-sided, you know, Yahtzee style, whatever, regular dice, uh, different colors. Um, I, I assume that the guys at Borden Dice did a good job of taking a look as far as uh, 
uh, colorblind and everything, but they are crystal clear as far as what the four different colors are, the white, the gray, the brown, uh, five colors? Yeah, five colors. The white, yellow, gray, brown, and black, all right? Um, Yeah, I'm totally fine with doing the physical copy. It's just understand that the streams take longer because of that, which you guys have seen. But as long as you guys are good with that, then 100%. It seems universal uh, physical that you guys are saying. So, so far, that's what I'm reading. So that's good. Uh, okay, so player aid. Let's go and bust that open. This is a, this is a nice sleeve, by the way, even. The, this giant one. This is thick. Yeah, Raphael says, Perseverance was so long, but I still enjoyed it a lot. Tried watching PAX Viking, but could not find the fun in looking at people trying to emulate a board game on a computer. So, oh, and Corey says, this colorblind dude can see just fine. Awesome. So, excellent. So, you guys can see uh, colorblind-wise. I figure I'd move the box out of there so there's no glare or it doesn't, it's not so dark. So, there are, there's four, one for each player. So, we have the, uh, the player aids here. I will... Here we go. Ah, it's still a little dark because I have everything on auto because I was, knew I was going to be doing that. So I apologize. But you know what? We can fix that. Hold on one second. Oh, that's why. Hey, there. Hey, that's, that's better. There we go. Okay. It's crystal clear. There's four. No, there's five colors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't count. Whatever. It's Friday, right? At least I got the day of the week, right? So these look very clear. And uh, they're, I mean, they're not cardboard. They are cards, but they're solid. So that's good. I'm a fan of that. So let's see what else. We'll get to the plastic or, I'm sorry, wooden pieces here in a bit. So bag for randomness. Uh, let's go and zoom out and go through the rule book, and then I'll show you guys the, uh, the, the board and the punch boards and everything after that, and then we'll, we'll throw some wooden bits on there, okay? Cool. Hey, Uwe. All right. It's good to see a lot of familiar faces and some new, all right? So, yeah, we can zoom out just a hair more, I think. There we go. Right. Move that over. There we go. So anybody out there that has to learn games for their game group or say for a living, i.e. me, I appreciate this page right here, all right? And the reason for that is at a glance, I want to know what are these pieces? I don't wanna to have to try and read and discern what these are. So the fact that, oh, the pillar, they're pillars. There should be eight per player. It's a simple thing, but I think this page, while not vitally necessary, goes a long way to helping uh, those of us that have to learn a game to be, it just eases the barrier to entry that much more. Again, it, if you don't learn the games and have to learn from the rule book, it's not, probably, you're thinking, ah, what a big deal, but no, really, this, this page really legitimately is, so, all right. There we go. Lighten that up. All right. So it seems everybody universally, 100% is uh, for the live version. So, well, Rainer, I guess we got our answer, huh? Well, it looks laid out very well. Again, I mean, I know how to play uh, Tekenu already. I've played it a number of times, once at uh, Gamma Trade Show, right as the world was ending, and then uh, again on Tabletopia with Rainer. Uh, last week, was it? Week before? They all run together at this point. But uh, yeah, you're going to see this next week. And yes, a solo mode, which you may see the week after that from yours truly as well. Who did the rule book? Let's see. Oh, Agnieszka did it uh, for the layout. And David, Rainer, Bla is it Blaza? And Malgrazada? And rule book editing. All right. Christy, Emanuela, and Robert. 
cracked. All right, good stuff. Nice. It looks good. I mean, I, I haven't gone through the rule book and read through it. Okay. So. And then quick reference, always nice, even though we do have, again, we have the player aids, but again, that's nice. And yes, it does see the people, the people in chat agree, right? So it shows the components there as well as all of this, but it shows how many you should have and what they look like. It's a little thing, but man, this makes life a lot easier. So Corey, since apparently you are a resident colorblind, yes, the colors, at least on that, um, let's go ahead here. Uh, the colors look pretty true to form here, it looks like. So let's see here. Uh, there's three of them there. There are the four colors. I like this, man. Non-traditional colors like that? I dig that. Those are pretty close. So, yeah. I, uh, yeah. David says, uh, Botankuma, uh, Haman. Hamun will kick my butt. All right, I have no doubt, but I'm going to try it in a couple weeks on stream. We will see. All right. So, yeah, those look really, really good. So, nice. All right. Good. All right. Rule book. Uh, done. Move on. So, well, here. You know what? We got wooden bits. Hey, Shrey. By the way, all was good. Thank you for the heads up, though. Okay. So oodles of wooden bits. So those are some tiny little meeples right here. I don't need to bust these out, I don't think, but yeah, uh, thumb for, for, <laughs> for scale. <laughs> All right, so there's those. Regular size meeples in the four player colors there. I know that because the rule book said so. Cubes, player colors. Now it's too bright. <sighs> This is what happens when you turn it on auto and you don't normally. So there we go. Uh, and then uh, Mox are those? Max? M-A-A-K, I think it was, or Mon? M-A-A-N, was it? Uh, Mott markers. No, those are the discs. Sorry, these are statues. I apologize. There we go. Okay. Should make it easier for when we play. Corey, I don't have to yell. That's not red. <laughs> I'm not laughing at his, you know, colorblind. I'm, you, Brianna, you know what's up. All right, there we go. And last but not least, the last of the wooden bits are, these are the buildings here, all right, in four-player colors as well. Yeah, these look good. Chunky bits, nice, excellent. You know what this isn't? Doesn't have to have a bunch of minis. Or stand, never mind. The, the, the fight that's going on right now about standees versus minis is just silly. Come on, people. All right. Let's keep going. All right. Yeah, you're welcome, Randolph. Glad, uh, glad you guys are... Yeah, I figure if I get it, I might as well show you guys. Okay. So let's see the board, then we'll go to the punch board, shall we? So let's zoom out. Have a good one, Luke. Oh, that's a big board. It's a six panel, but they're large panels. Woo wee. That is, that's like dominant species, even though that's an eight uh, fold board. Um, there we go. So just. Yeah, we can. There we go. I, that's pretty close. And, and. You guys can't really appreciate that, but you will be able to uh, with the uh, with the PTZ, which I don't have on because it was an unboxing, so I figured the top down. But here, think of it this way. It'll look like that. All right. Derek, I'll run this over to you so you can paint this. I'm being dead serious, too. All right. Um, I will. Okay. So keep in mind that, yes. Board and Dice is a partner as far as uh, we have a partnership for playthroughs and all this. This is not sponsored, okay? Um, this is the same size board as Teotihuacan, 
And people are saying, wow, that's a packed board. Fair, yes, it is. But let's go ahead and uh, let's zoom in on some of this stuff. And I will give you my honest take on it. So let me get some of this stuff out of the way. All right. I will say that every, actually, there's not a, there's a lot of empty space on this board, to be honest with you. So let's look at this. We'll, we'll take it kind of zone by zone. So if you take a look here at the main, let me zoom out just a hair. All right. Uh, so each of the different zones has to correspond or it corresponds with a different part of the board and a different action, right? So over here, this God, and I don't know all the God names off the top of my head. I will have a little cheat sheet up for me when we stream. But this God right here has to do with this part of the board. When you pull a die from here, it has to do with this part of the board, so on and so forth. So when you look at it that way, it's actually really, really clear. Uh, these are going to be a purity dice, tainted dice, and unavailable dice over there. And then the six die faces correspond to which of the gods where you're going to be able to place uh, statues out here and what you're going to get for those things. I mean, it's like I said, there's a lot of empty space here, but that's a good thing that the board is not cluttered, right? It's going to be tiles over here for build, uh, uh, what are these called? Um... I can't remember the name and I'm looking at the rule book. Um, pillar, yeah, pillars. You're gonna be able to build pillars because the pillars go on top of these. Um, but these are the pillar bases, the foundations. So whenever you take that action on it there, then over here, this area, you're going to have to do with this area to be able to build out there. And when you take the, that pillar action up there, you're gonna be able to build uh, foundations and pillars on this to be able to get resources and then the buildings here will go for other ways of scoring as well. Then this area here is going to allow you to gain uh, happiness and also up here you're going to be able to gain followers which has to do with this track right here. Happiness also is going to have to do with this track there. Then here you're going to be able to grab uh, cards and the special, uh, let's see, technology cards, decree cards, et cetera, et cetera, uh, and blessing cards, which are all going to be down here in their respective areas there. And then finally, you're going to be able to build, and I'm going to forget the term I did during our stream of this. Uh, what are, yeah, they're buildings, but there's another word for it down here. All right, so, all right, so this area. So, so getting back to it, when you look at the whole package now of the board, you can see that, oh, wow, okay, yeah. Here corresponds there, there, there. Now, how does the iconography do that? I will have to see when we actually uh, stream this or when I'm learning the game, and I'll be able to let you guys know uh, what I think about that as well. Um, so, yeah, all right. All right, cool. Workshops and quarries. Thank you, Rainer. I knew I knew the word. I just couldn't remember. All right, so there's the board. And again, the uh, that bad boy. Purely aesthetic. I mean, it's not necessary. But I will say that when you're sitting at the table here, it makes an impression. The obelisk does. All right, so yeah, it's pretty good. So, all right. All right, let's take a look at the punch boards and then we'll wrap it up like the fabulous Thunderboards. I'll take it. All right, so what do we got? Here we go. See, and it's a little touch, but I appreciate that the little bag is in here, etc. All right, so here we go. So these are... Wow, that came out easy. Okay, uh, so here are the player boards. Now, these are not a dual layer player boards, but take a look. So here, you can see my hand. So your cubes will go in there. They're not double layer, but let's face it. If, uh, hmm, let's zoom out a little bit. So if you have your player board like so, still to be able to place a cube, let's grab a cube, shall we? Here we go. Ah. It 
So, like that. And it fits perfectly. Like in the, yeah. Can you guys see right there? So all of these get punched out. Again, it helps that I'm pretty familiar with this game for this. So there we go. So you have, and all of those will be, but I'm not going to spend the time to go through all those. Um, but just to show you guys uh, the four player colors as they look in this. There we go. Now, it'll only be one per track, but again, I'm just showing you what the different player colors will look like in this. But there you go. And they sit, so now look, even if you bump your thing, because it's a hole that they're sitting in on your table, they're not going to fall. They're not going to move. They're not going to do all that stuff. So that's kind of nice. All right. All right. So, yeah, pretty cool. And you can see they fit really well because they just come right through, right? And eh, didn't quite make it straight, but you get the idea. All right. So player boards. They're pretty thick, as you can see. All right. All right, so the rest get punched out. You get the idea. Uh, more player boards, which let's see if I can make this one pop out. Nope, not quite. That one actually required me to punch it, but you get, yeah. Uh, resources, again, it's the same th cardboard thickness there as the player board, so that's perfectly, uh, okay, that one came out. There you go. Which, when it pop falls out like that, I, I take it as a good punching. That's, that's a good sign. So simple uh, cardboard. Resources, all very clear as to what they are. And then we have the, uh, the foundations here for our uh, pillars, all right? And then fives for five uh, resources, whatever. We have scribes down here. Aha! And there's the wheel for the obelisk. So I feel like I need to show you guys this part as well before we get out of here. Um, and these are, where are they? I saw them. Ah, Horus bonus tiles up there. All right. So, all right. So now this is going to be the important part to be able to get the pillar to stay because here we go. So the pillar you'll see has that. So let's, uh, other way. So you can either have it when you're new to the game or as I put it, every time I play this game, I'm going to have it on this side, to where whenever you rotate the obelisk, it shows you what is purity, which is tainted, and which dice are, colors are going to be unavailable, depending on the shadow that it casts, et cetera, et cetera. Um, or if you prefer a cleaner look and you just have it committed to memory, like somebody like Rainer, then you can do so like that, okay? All right, so let's see here now. This is risky, me doing this in person. Oh, 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 wow. It actually sits really, really, really easily. So then from there, let me move all of this stuff out of the way. I had a feeling it was going to happen. So we'll do it like this, how it's supposed to be done. There we go. And it just sits there. Now, could it be bumped off? Yes, if you actually hit it, it can. But other than that, Right there, it, it goes in real easy, and here. Just, I'm not being super s gentle with it, and that goes depending on which round it is, where that's going to be pointing, et cetera, et cetera, and this won't turn either. This is actually a really simple solution to this. Now, again, it will fall off, but you have to actually knock it. So, if we put that back on like so, I mean, here. I'm not exactly being gentle with it, and it's not going to move, is the point. All right? So, there we go. So, and it's not falling. So, there we go. Takenu. Uh, hey, Rainer. What day you want to do this next week? Let's figure that out, shall we? Pick a day. I was thinking, like, well, let me look at the calendar. Let's see. Uh, Fifteenth tax day. 
give people something happy to be about, be happy about on tax day? I think so. Yeah, well done. Yeah, it looks great. Uh, this looks way better than the prototype I played at Gamma, let me tell you. <laughs> Uh, no, so a little bit of bad news for everybody watching. Um, tomorrow's stream for uh, uh, Tales of Northlands is going to have to get postponed until next week. This guy's fault. I, I double scheduled some stuff that I have to take care of, personal stuff, um, that can't be rescheduled. So unfortunately, that's going to get postponed until next week. Sunday is still going to happen. So Sunday's uh, Space Corp is still happening. Um, I may do... Uh, Saturday's solo stream of Tales of Northlands on Monday. It may be that quick. Uh, that's to be determined. I'll let you guys know, but sorry about that. But yeah, if, uh, yeah, all right. So it sounds like Wednesday. You're going to see this. So we're going to stream it live. Um, yeah, either Rainer will be playing or he will be, uh, he will be in the peanut gallery, one or the other, but Rainer will be there. So good deal. All right. Cool. Good stuff. Uh, I don't know if, uh, uh, pre-orders are still available. I'm sure Rainer will, uh, you know what, Rainer, if they are, here, make you a mod real quick. There you go. If, if there are, you can link to it real quick. So if you guys want to take a look at it, um, but yeah, join us for the stream next week for Tekenu, Obelisk of the Sun. So David, good job. Great job. You and, uh, Danielle, uh, very good job on the design. Uh, really enjoyable game. You can definitely see that this is in the... A uh, vein of Teotihuacan. However, uh, I feel like it's an evolution of it, and an evolution in a good way. Um, so yeah, all right. So, all right, cool. So, Rainer, if it's still available for pre-order, throw link in there. If not, then people will have to get it without pre-ordering. So there you go. All right, thanks everybody for joining me. If you guys liked it, like, subscribe, support the show over on PledgeHC.com. Join us. Apparently. July 15th, my guess is 7 p.m. Eastern. It might be earlier in the day if Rainer and I can schedule it and we have other people, uh, it works out. It might be earlier in the day, make it more EU friendly. Uh, so we'll see what we can do on that. So time to be determined, but we'll see you guys next week for that. All right, there you go. There's a link for the pre-orders. Check it out right over there. Cool, there we go. All right, take care everybody. I'll see you guys, remember, no stream tomorrow, so I will postpone that. I apologize, but I will be back Sunday for Space Court at, I think, 3 p.m. Eastern. I'll see you all then. Take care, everybody. Take care. See you all then.